because being this fragile, this plant was a, a nightmare. Hello everyone, I'm Adina from Plants But Better and today I'm talking about this beautiful plant, String of Hearts, which is a string with hearts on it. And yeah, this is all I had to say. See you next time. Don't forget to take care of yourself and your plants. Okay, jokes aside, this is a very, very fragile plant and I would give it a 7 out of 10 on our care meter because I had a lot of trouble with this plant and I'm going to explain what I mean in this video. It's not the easiest for me and I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner, that's for sure. Let's talk about light. This plant needs a shit ton of light like the brightest indirect light you could get. Lack of ideal light will affect those leaves. They will fall off and the vines will remain empty and you'll end up with a pretty sick looking plant like this one. But that's also because of aphids, but I will talk about pests a little bit later on this video. If you don't have enough light in your home, you can help it with grow lights. And if your summer is gentle, you can sure let this plant outside. I experimented with mine and I left it on the balcony. It is a northwest facing balcony, so it got afternoon sun, which is a bit more gentle. And for the summertime, this plant grew up in three months like it never did in its entire existence. It has more than a meter and it's very healthy so far. So I would recommend in general a great amount of light for this plant. Moving on to watering. It's best to let your substrate dry out completely and you can check it once in a while, like dip your finger into soil and see if the substrate is dry. I would say in the summertime you can water it every week and in the winter time just slow it down to maybe once every two weeks. I think I water mine even less because I'm afraid of root rot. But that's maybe the subject for another video. This plant doesn't like excess water, but what about temperature? String of Hearts prefers average temperatures. Somewhere around 18 to 25 degrees Celsius, I think it's great, but I would not advise you to leave it below 15 degrees Celsius because most plants in general don't like cold temperatures. The foliage will suffer, especially on this very, very fragile plant. Moving on to humidity. I've grown String of Hearts in all kinds of humidity, somewhere around 50 to 80 percent is great. I would say this plant is pretty adaptable but I've seen that if you give it greater amounts of humidity this will help the aerial roots grow and that will help you into propagating this plant. If your humidity is high in your home that's great but if you have something around 30 to 40 percent I would advise you to get a humidifier and not only for plants you can use that on yourself as well. You're not supposed to live in very dry air. That's not good for your lungs. What about fertilizer? You can feed your plant every month, once a month during growing season. And in the winter, if your plant is still growing, you can still feed it with a more diluted solution and a bit less often. I usually stop during winter time because most of my plants go dormant. I use a balanced MPK of 10, 10, 10, but this plant is not very pretentious, so you can use almost anything. Something higher in nitrogen is good as well. That will help the leaves grow a bit better and be a bit greener so there's no need to worry about the ratio, the MPK ratio. Moving on to substrate. Because this plant doesn't like excess water, the substrate should be very, very lightweight. I use on my plant a mix based on cocoa some perlite and some pine barks. This is usually a cheap mix that is doing great for most plants. But if you have another mix and if your mix is draining well, you can use almost anything. Just don't use regular potting soil because that is usually too heavy heavy on the roots, I would advise to add at least perlite. Perlite is very airy and it helps the water drain great. Moving on to plastic versus terracotta. So I have my plant in plastic. It's doing great so far. I would say you can grow it in terracotta as well, but for terracotta, if you've seen any of my videos, I may sound very repetitive, but <laughs> terracotta is a bit more porous and it helps water evaporate faster and you may want to check your plant a bit more often and adjust your watering schedule. But other than that, I think you can grow this plant great in both mediums. What about repotting? I don't think you'll repot this plant that often and maybe the best time to repot it is when you actually see a lot of growth coming out from the drainage holes and definitely not on this one. This has soil for days. <laughs> the roots on this plant are very interesting. They look like mini tubers. I will put a picture right here. Those help in water storage and they also
also grow some tiny fragile roots as well. So I would advise you to be very very gentle with this plant and repot it only if it's necessary. Don't change its home too often because you lose a lot of roots and that would cause a lot of stress for this plant. And I would advise you to do your repotting in the warmer periods of time because in that time your plant is in the growing season and it will have a better chance of recovery. It's not 100% necessary but I think you should keep that in mind. Moving on to propagation and you have a lot of options with this plant. The easiest way is by water propagation. So you cut your plant into segments, you place it in water and just wait for the new roots. You can also propagate it directly into soil. I find that sphagnum moss and coco coir work best for this plant. So you just chop your plant, place those segments on the soil, spray it with some water and place them into a zip bag. You have to keep that humidity high in order for those roots to grow fast. And with this plant I think you can use almost any type of substrate. So so you're good. So we're good. What about pests? And now you'll find out why I give this plant a 7 out of 10. Because this plant I think it had almost any type of pests possible. So first let's start with aphids because those were the first ones to ruin my plant. I will put a picture in here and this is how I discovered the aphids. Unfortunately it was a very large infestation when I saw them and I was a beginner at that time but after a few treatments I got rid of them let's say easier than other pests. However my plant got so sick that it was almost leafless. And I chopped it and I tried to propagate it and it was a nightmare. Then the second time I dealt with trips and those are way, way worse than aphids in my opinion. They are super hard to get rid of. And then again I did a lot of treatments and I was so done with this plant. I mean to the point I was like okay I'm going to throw you out because you're not worth the trouble. And uh, yeah I abandoned it on the balcony. My plant was leafless again and I thought you know what if you survive on the balcony that's great. You have a great sun exposure but if you don't that's still great because I'm kind of sick of it. And guess what? When I tried to like water my plants on the balcony, this bitch right here didn't want to give up. And it grew week by week and it got to this point. And I thought, yay, I was done with trips. But I was wrong. <laughs> then colder temperatures came so I had to get my plants inside and I got trips again on this plant. I spot them in time like I, I saw the first tiny trips. I got the treatment. And I would say overall to really take your time to inspect your plants because sometimes some plants are way susceptible for pests than others and this one for sure in my opinion is a pest magnet. And another reason that is a 7 out of 10 on my meter is that if you want to make this plant look decent and you have a shit ton of time on your hands you will spend more than a few hours to untangle this plant. I did that the first couple of times but then I was like okay you can grow however you want it's just too much trouble. But other than that is a very good looking plant don't get me wrong I really like how this plant looks but I want to warn you in order to know every little detail that annoys me as well on this plant. It's a very fast grower it doesn't have a lot of requirements but is a pest magnet. But if you don't mind dealing with pests and all that stuff, I think your plant is a great fit for you. And also you can learn from my experience to actually check your plant a lot more often. But I think I really talked a lot about the segments. So we should move on to toxicity. And this plant is actually not toxic for pets. That's, that's the good news. <laughs> Maybe other tips and tricks that you should consider. If you see tiny tubers on this plant, like on the stems, there is no need to worry. This is how they develop. And this is actually one of the reasons this plant is also called rosary vine. The string of hearts can also bloom. I got to see that surprise in the summertime when I left it outside. It's a bit of a difficult plant but it's still a very appealing plant. If you have any questions that I didn't give the answer to you can leave them in the comments. If you want to help me spread the message you can leave a thumbs up. And until next time don't forget to take care of yourself and your plants.